Hello guys, welcome to my review for Thor. This movie came out in 2011. I have reviewed this movie before, but they were terrible reviews and I hate them. They're really bad. But I reviewed Iron Man um, a few days ago. And um, I reviewed that movie because I rewatched it and then I realised, you know what, I really love this. I want to go back and rewatch all the other MCU movies because what else is there to do now? Uh, we're stuck in lockdown, so what else is there to do? Then watch all the Marvel films again. Uh, I won't be reviewing all of them. I'll just be reviewing the ones that I feel like I haven't talked enough about. And I haven't talked enough about Thor. I really like this film. I think it's a good origin story for the character. And I have to praise Chris Hemsworth in this role. Because this is definitely a very obscure character. I mean, if you look at the old iterations of Thor from the old Hulk movies. Then it's terrible. But here the, he, they add a more serious tone. And they definitely try and bring him literally down to earth with this fish out of water story with him meeting Jane and Darcy and Eric Selvig and a lot of the elements of that f uh, and of the earth stuff does quite bore me quite a bit and I don't really care about the human characters I think that Thor's relationship um, with Natalie Portman's character is just very off in the movie it just never sits well with me and a lot of it is quite boring besides when he's making a joke like the bit where he throws the, the cup down the drink I like it Another. There's another, or the bit where he walks into the pet and goes, I need a horse! You know, it's just, all those moments are really, really funny, and I like the fish out of water humour that they do with Thor's character, him adjusting to everything on Earth, but I find the stuff on Asgard such better, not just visually stunning, which it is. I watched the movie in 4K on Disney+, Plus. that's how I've been watching um, the, the majority of these MCU films on there, and uh, you can definitely tell the difference. I mean, I've been able to see a lot more things um, in these movies that I haven't been seen before in this resolution and it's really outstanding but a lot of the stuff on Earth looked very grainy and it just doesn't look as interesting um, but a lot of the Asgard stuff looks phenomenal the Rainbow Bridge, the Bifrost, the Asgardian Palace it all looks very grandiose, very Lord of the Rings and it's really really great, it looks really epic and we just don't get enough of Asgard um, I do really appreciate the story this movie tells though this very human story. These two brothers who both want approval of their father in different ways. And one of them goes the bad way around it, and one of them goes the good way around it. And I like Thor's terms. Actually, Thor is quite a difficult character to actually relate to in this film. It's not until that scene where he stands up to the destroyer and talks to Loki, and he finally becomes worthy. Everything before that, I'm like, you don't deserve to pick up this hammer. You know, and it takes quite adjusting, because he's very arrogant. He's very you know, he he doesn't really sit well, he's not following the rules, you know, he wants to go out and start wars and stuff, he wants to go out and battle, and that's not what a king should do, he's definitely not ready to be king, and he has to come to terms with that, and he has to come in terms with his father, and that's exactly what Loki wants to do as well, and Loki's manipulation throughout this film, he's such a great villain, I feel like he's a better villain in the Avengers, and he only gets better as this series goes on, but he is a villain in this one, you understand exactly why he's doing it, because he's the adopted one of the family. He's like the black sheep of the family. He's left out. And that I love. I love that that, that would easily be a great motivational thing for, to drive someone to do these evil things. And it definitely really shows. And Anthony Hopkins as Odin, great casting. MCU, I will always say it, perfect casting all around. Everything is perfection. Chris Hemsworth owns this role, Tom Hiddleston owns this role, and they only improve in better movies. Thor is a movie though that, on rewatch, the there is some pacing issues, and it, there is times where it really does dip in the pace, especially a lot of the stuff on Earth. Uh, I really like the scene where Thor is explaining the science to, to Jane Foster. I really like that scene is explaining how magic and science are one of the same thing. It's really, really great, and I love that scene. Magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same. Um, it's quite an empowering moment, actually, and um, th there's a lot of moments like that in this film uh, that I really start to connect to Thor's character and understand his world, understand who he is, uh, but I feel we don't get enough time of him on Asgard. We don't. It's not that we don't get enough time at Asgard, we don't get enough time of him in his normal life, what normal life is like for him, because it's quite hard to adjust to it. I feel like they did a difficult job with this film, trying to make Thor relate to us, try and make him a relatable hero, because Iron Man is a very relatable hero, even though he's this big genius building a playboy philanthropist that many of us can't relate to, he has a human story, and they gave Thor a very human story here with his brother and with his father, 
And that really what drives the film, someone who needs to be worthy of something and has to own that worthiness. And I thought that was really powerful. Actually, the scene where Odin strips him of his power is actually a very emotional scene. There's a lot of magical stuff that is emphasized in this film that I really like. A lot of the comedy is really good. I don't like the... I. Um, I don't like a lot of the human comedy, especially with the character Darcy, but all the fish out of water comedy with Thor is really good. It's also a well directed movie. The action is really good. One problem I do have, and I'm going to get into my problems now. I've set up my praises. I think the movie's good, sets up a great world, sets up great characters. And one of my biggest issues with it, though, the damn Dutch angles. I mean, I don't want to look at everything like this. I'm sorry. It, it, no, even though Kenneth Branagh did a good job filming the action sequences, did a good job directing this movie, the Dutch angles, man. <laughs> it's not like there's a few of them. If there's a few of them, I would not mind, which I think that would actually be a good tool to use. But 20 minutes of this movie is on its side. It's so, it's so frustrating to get into. It's so distracting. It's, it's so distracting. I, I don't like it. It ends up being a huge problem for this film, unfortunately. And I said, it does get a little boring, the pace. It does a similar thing to Iron Man does in its pace, where Iron Man shows a scene in the pivotal moment where he becomes Iron Man, or the moment before he becomes Iron Man, then it shows us everything before. Here it shows us the moment where Thor lands on Earth, then it shows us everything before. So it's using the same structure as Iron Man to create an origin story. One of my least favorite MCU films, Thor. It's definitely not one of my favorite MCU movies. But I still like it. I still think it sets up the character very well. And I also think the score is really good for the first Thor film. I think Patrick Daw's music here is actually really solid. It's quite an emotional score and it adds quite a lot to all of the scenes. It's definitely one of my favourite MCU scores, I think. Uh, my grade has gone down a little bit just because I've found some more problems with the movie. And it's not as rewatchable as I thought because I love, I love me some Thor Ragnarok. That movie is so, so amazing. <laughs> And every time I want to watch Thor, I want to watch that. And seeing how his characters change, especially in Avengers Endgame, um, I can't help but not sort of get into this movie as much as I used to, because I've now seen where this leads off, and I would rather see that than this. But it's a good progression. Thor has a character rock in this movie. Um, and they show that pretty well, in my opinion. And I think the first Thor film is a good origin story. It's a magical film, it's a mystical film, um, but it doesn't have enough of that, unfortunately. But I still think it's a good MCU movie, and it makes the groundwork for what is really good world building and really good character building. I'm going to give Thor a B. I'm also going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. Guys, comment down below your opinions on the first Thor film, and of course, thank you for watching, and goodbye.